What's going on, everybody? Come on, the tabloid. We're back here live in living color. What up? What up? Cutting a promo this week, ladies and gentlemen, is our new segment called The Hot Tag. You guys will learn about it in a minute. Just make sure that you share, subscribe, and give love to what's going on here at Turnbuckle Tabloid. This week's segment, we're looking at uh, the man. <laughs> Larger than life. Yikes. That was, that, was, that was your rape. That was your rape. Larger than life, known as the big show. So make sure you share, share, like, once again, like I said, and uh, let's get it. Here, you motherfuckers. Are we going to allow people to call in? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, but Which, by the way, I have a funny story about calling in. What do you mean? Let's just say Chris Van Vliet did an epi- did an interview with Vampiro, and they asked my question and Ben the Bits Brit's question to him. What, that, um, how big is Batista's dick? I was like, do you regret your, t- I was like, how, I was like, what, I was like, explain to me your time in Wrestling Society X. Oh, that was, oh, oh, okay. Right. They so, fucking put the strap on the guy. He was like the main champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and he sorry. was like, he was like, oh, I had no idea. I didn't even want to be champion. All right, ready? Yeah. Turbuckle Tabloid, cutting a promo. What's going on, everybody? Here on Memorial Day weekend, Turbuckle Tabloid is back for your listening pleasure. And this week's cutting a promo, we are going into what we are calling the hot tag. The hot tag will be a segment dedicated to breaking down and microscopically uh, not listening to possibly the ice cream truck behind me. Uh, nice. I want a double fudge cone. The individuals who are... Well, not only individuals, individuals, promotions, eras, whatever the fuck it was. God damn, y'all getting loud as shit. What the fuck? <laughs> getting into that whole motif of individuals who have who've made an impact, were controversial. You see, cutting a promo, we usually do something that's more current, you know, like current events, topical of the of the day and age. But we want to go retrospectively and look at certain individuals. Promotions, eras, uh, uh, match types, whatever. So this week we're looking at the big show. Oski, give him a little intro of what was going on. Well, when it comes to the big show, I we chose him because, quite frankly, he's had a hell of a career. Uh, he, he when I was a kid, he was my personal favorite. I got his action figure day one it came out. Uh, I met the big show. Shit, I have a picture with the big show. I met him at fucking WrestleMania 23, no, 20, like, fours press conference. He is the, he is known as the gentle giant. Like, uh, he, he, he's had more heel turns than body counts, but I'm, but he is the, genuinely a gentle giant, but his career had so many up and down, ups and downs. While I was doing my research this week, it, it, it reminded me of the, of the, of the constant, it went from Big Show being a serious threat in the business to a comedy attraction, to a special attraction, to a serious again. And then they made him a joke again. It's such an up and down career. But the one thing I'll tell you is Big Show was loyal and he did whatever they needed to do. And even to this day, retired. If Vince calls him and says, I need you, Big Show goes, when and where? I'm there. So the career of Big Show just is very, very, very interesting. Um, few early notes. He was trained by Larry Sharp and Thrasher, um, and debuted in '94. Which I thought he debuted in about '96, '95, but uh, close enough. Um, Red, what's your earliest? Me- Before we go into the logistics of the Big Show, I always wanted to know what was your first memory of the Big Show? Was it because was it as Paul White, Big Show, or the Giant? I knew him as the Giant. That was terrible name. 
Of but, course. They, they, I mean, but they were piggybacking of him being initially the son of Andre the Giant. And, and also because um, he was in the fucking Dungeon of Doom, so they had to give him a corny-ass name anyway. Yeah, because everybody had a little gimmick. It was um, yep. <laughs> you know, the shark or the fucking rabbit or the raccoon or whatever the fuck. Uh, the Zodiac or whatever the fuck. The Barber Beefcake was the fucking witch. The, the, I forgot his fucking name. Uh, the, um, the voodoo. Kick, the voodoo fucking, guy, yeah. Shit, whatever the fuck. Uh, the Zodiac. That's what it was. I think it was the Zodiac. One episode of the hot tag, we gotta go over the Dungeon of Doom because what a disaster! I I got to say that the, uh, Kevin Sullivan at that and that era was the puppet master. Ray Ramundo, what up, boy? Yo, Ben what the up? Brit, what's going on, Ben? Oh shit, what up? Um, uh, guys, phone lines will be open. I'm just trying to see how to manifest this because uh, desktop is uh trying to get it up and running. As always, 315-371-4367. That's 315-371-4367. So, um, when he came into the WCW as a giant, he was a young man. He, everybody believed that, you know, with his size and the way he looked, that he was older by means. No, he was barely in his 20s when he got he into the business. Young. Yes. And he... Um, he spoke about it on the on Stone Cold podcast on the uh, the the Broken Skull podcast that he was green as goose shit. Yep, he he said it. He was. Um, they saw the size and they saw the structure of the guy and they threw him in the fucking WCW with barely any training. He he said he was training for just a couple of months. He had no idea how to really sell. He was green as goose shit, like you said. He was greener than the authors of Pain, and they're green still. Yeah, uh, but he was also athletic. He played. Uh, I believe he played college basketball. Uh, you also got to remember that this was a guy who was conscious enough to know about his deformity and was able to halt it before it got crazy. Because yeah. you know he was he he had the gigantism and whatever scientific term that it, you would turn you you would put to it, but yeah. he was able to have the surgery where you can you you halted it because he would have probably. Been like this deformed figure. Yep, and he would have been like Andre, who uh, got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and didn't uh, couldn't be stopped, which is not healthy. Ben so. always has to find a way to revert to making something about Midian because he put, he had to put the giant, he had to put um, Paul White in the ministry. But you also had to take in consideration the the um, the look of him. A lot of big men weren't very good looking. We have to, let's be honest about this shit. You had Giant Baba, you had Andre, Valid. you had uh, uh, um, uh, Giant, Giant Gonzalez. Uh, huh? Who else you had? The ugly Giant Gonzalez, fucking um, yeah, that's the one that comes up to mind. That just oh. yeah, you didn't really have these very um model esque looking individuals. The Giant Paul White wasn't a bad looking kid. No, and he had the luscious long hair at the time. He was um he was definitely attracted to the eye while also being a freak of nature. And when when you look at how he came in, how he came with that look, it, it could have been a a play off. Yeah, he could have been Andre's son. Like when he came into WCW, there was a a a mystique with him that this could have been a possibility. Right. So during his progression, he was already catapulted during WCW into the limelight. Got into big matches with with Hogan. Uh, had a big match with the, uh, the, the 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 Bigfoots, the the four wheelers on the roof. Oh, what oh, a God. shit Monster that was! Monster truck mayhem match. Exactly. What a shit that was. But early on, like like uh, he was. He actually got exposure to a lot of great guys in the business. Marco, what's going on, Marco? Mook! Marco! Uh, um, I, I don't know if you remember, but like I, I did my research, and it said that like, Danny Bonaducci introduced him to Hulk Hogan, and they had like a fucking like a lot of exposure to like the, the to the great talent in WCW early on. But yeah. like he saw on the Stone Cold show, he just didn't know what to do. He felt like he he felt disrespectful. For even being in the ring with how green he was with those kind of guys. Yeah, 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 and it, and it's it's one of those those look at the draw kind of things. Listen, you're a big monster. You're you're 
you you have this look and he he had said for a while that he wanted to get into business he used to even go to to wrestling signings to see if he get someone to look hell he even when he was a kid he ran into Arn Anderson in uh at a show and he was in a parking lot on his bike and he would would think that he, someone would look at him and it was like, yeah, all right, whatever. So it, it, it goes to show that it doesn't work just because you're big and tall. Or like it doesn't work for everybody. No, it doesn't. It's just a, it's a, it's a strike at the, the mill. It's, it's a, it's a, he was given an opportunity, and he didn't think he deserved it, but he definitely didn't give up. I'll give you that. He tried. He tried very hardly, very, uh, very hard, and which we'll talk about once he goes to WWF, the fact that Vince kept telling him, you need to be a giant. Well, and he was like, I don't know what the fuck that means, but okay. <laughs> And what, Which, people, what people tend to forget was he was the fourth member of NWO. Yes, he was. He was the ex, he was the first guy besides the three that was introduced. And then you know the entire WCW roster became the NWO. But before that, the uh, the Big Show was the one of the first members. It's a it's 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 a look that you have thought that you know. He looks menacing because of his size and his stature, but it's also a look to where that he could also play a baby face as well. Yes. I mean, early on, of course, when the big monsters guys have that heel vibe because they're monsters, but we, we, we came to find out Big Show could be both. And actually, he, I think he thrived in both. What would, when, you, when you first was able to get a look at the, the Big Show, what was your first thought to him? The giant powerful he was always when he came out i was always like holy shit this guy is huge because uh we uh, listen we're, we're how many episodes deep and um if, if you don't know how young i am you're clearly not a listener uh my first touches in wrestling was when big show my first wrestlemania was big show versus john cena for the u.s belt at wrestlemania 20 okay that was my first wrestlemania i ever watched and just to see how giant he was, regardless of how he wrestled, what he did, every single move mattered. And I, the thing that caught me most of the Big Show was his personality, but also when he, whenever he did the shh and then slapped the shit, they chopped the shit out of them. Then it was, it was truly a sight to see. I felt like as a kid, I was watching the the eight, the the special attraction in the circus, how monstrous the fucking guy was, and you can never take away the threat of a guy that big you can't <laughs> henry's like damn you are young <laughs> yeah no kidding bro no kidding i'm 22 it's uh, what, you know i love it because people i i i when, when i came up with the whole premise for the show that was the dynamic that i i wanted i wanted to have that gap because i didn't want to have the conversation with someone who was of my age of my uh, of my era because it just sounds like Two old fox talking about some old shit. I want to hear the young man's kind of uh, thoughts of learning something new or being a part of something during that uh, that progression. Because man, yeah. you you were you were you 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 would see the giant when you when you met him when you saw him. Was it like, my God? Uh, he picked me up with one hand. <laughs> like he literally like he, he put his hand out for a handshake and he was like let me guess big right and i'm like no kidding like he's a fucking monster but like i said earlier on in the, in the segment he is a gent gentle friendly giant he is like the nicest wrestler i've ever met in person he went out of his way to say hi to me i didn't actually say hi to him he came to me and he was like you guys are having a good time I, that was when that was the year when he fought mayweather and my mom, my mom doesn't know wrestling much. My mom loves the big show because every time she saw him on TV, she just knew he was a cuddly, friendly giant who had a great heart, but was also a great wrestler. Um, you know, after his WCW run being green as goose shit, WWF signed him because, you know, Vince is known for taking people away from others because, you know, sharing isn't fun in Vince's eyes and debuted as Paul White, correct? Yeah, debut was Paul White. Uh, was a big splash at, at St. Valentine's Day Massacre with a match between Vince McMahon and Stone Cold in a steel, a steel uh, cage. 
Which, um, which, by the way, the fact that he goes from from WCW and then Vince goes, hey, so you're not debuting by yourself. You're going to be with me in, in the main event storyline. How scary could that be as a wrestler being put on that kind of pedestal? Well, yeah. Uh, and once again, you're put on that, that pedestal after leaving WCW, after uh, having a nice run with NWO. Um, thought he could have had a better run in NWO. I really I really. I agree, but that was all, you know, I think the whole 90, late 90s of WCW was politicking and a bunch of skeevy bullshit. And so. like you said, he was green as goose shit and didn't know about the business in the back. And, you know, there were certain individuals who were, who were steering him the wrong way. But and he it was, admitted it. And he admitted it. He goes, yo, I used to go in the back and tell people, guys, I don't know if I'm ready for this. You know what they said? You're big. Shut up. You'll be fine. And, like, what? Uh, really? Yeah. And you, you, he took, he took uh, um, whatever... Uh, if uh, information or education that was given to him and took it as gospel and it was not helpful for him. Nope. But a guy the, for a guy his size, he had a standing he had a standing drop kick, a, a standing drop kick as well. It's crazy. Braun Strowman esque, which we see in Braun Strowman having that in his yeah. um that now. But but he, but he also learned he, he in which when he got to WWE WWF at the time and he learned that you don't need to do that. Be the big man. Yes, be which the big man. Which, like you said, during the Stone Cold podcast, he always worried about getting everyone else's shit in. And Stone Cold had to pull him to the side and say, no, Undertaker did. And he was like, yo, you're a giant. Zack Ryder should not be, be fucking making you look like a rag doll, son. You're a giant. That's what it is. You have to understand. They'll get it. You're a monster. You're not supposed to be putting these guys over like that. He goes, well, you know, I want everyone to get their shit in. No, 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 no. You're a giant. It's different. It's different. Brenda Britt, has to, Brenda Britt has to make sure that he has to emphasize that he did a moonsault too. Getting a phone call right now. Let me know if you hear it. Turnbuckle tabloid, who's this? Hey, what's up, Jay? What's up, what's up, baby? Marco! What's up, what's up, what's up, what's Do you guys... Marco, do you hear Olski? Olski, do you hear Marco? I hear Marco. Hey, what's up, guys? Just hearing your podcast, man. Awesome, awesome, as always. Okay, good. Uh, Marco, what's your thoughts about the man himself, the big show? Well, he, he's a big guy. He's, oh, when, I, when I first saw him on WCW, he was, oh, he was pretty much athletic. He, I think he was like, um, he was doing his job. He was with a lot of Hall of Famers right there because he like Hogan, Mount Macho Man, uh, Scott Hall, uh, Kevin Nash, another big man. Yeah, but he was pretty good. He was decent. Who? Who would you? Who would you consider your biggest big man? Because you, 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 you are in a. Who? Who are you? Who do I think would? A very good big man, or what? Yeah, 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 because yeah, yeah. you mentioned Giant Silver. Well, um, I think, man, uh, Big Show is a pretty good, uh, decent successor of Andre Nicky, man, because uh, I don't think, um, like, Giant Gonzalez didn't do good. He couldn't rule because of his... his uh, but was he really a wrestler? I, was he was he more like a... Just a, just a presence? He, he wrestled like, in New Japan. I think in the eighties he wrestled in New Japan and Mexico he wrestled here too. Right. With Giant Silva. Yeah, right, right. Giant Silva. And uh like um well, I, I think Big Show is more athletic than those guys because he's like seven foot tall, something like that. Not that that tall. And well for for a giant. But I think he was a pretty decent wrestler, man. He knew he knew how to move himself. So he knew how to handle himself. So I think he, he, I think he needed more of a push, like Andre, but I don't think he had the charisma like Andre. So it's like right now they're saying a lot. I'm discussing with another guy here that said and Seth Rollins said something about the Undertaker because of the gimmick he's not so good anymore in this in this era. Dude, stop hating on that guy. He's already been for the business for 30 years. That's another big man, too. He has a gimmick. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. You're not transcending because you're a 
you're a DJ wrestler, but you're not that wrestler, like that face. And so that's, I think they, they have to get out and, they need to have more respect for those wrestlers like Fischl. Not respect to him because he knows something. He knows what he's doing on the ring now. The uh, before I let you go, your best Big Show moment. Best Big Show moment. Um, I think the one who captured us all when he went to when I guess Cody Rhodes for the Intercontinental Championship. Man, I think it was a pretty decent. Uh, match, I think. And the uh, Survivor Series thing with Doc Lesnar and Nathan Jones and all that, that was a pretty cool one, too. Now, well, he wasn't there. I don't, I don't remember he was um, a match with them, but I think they, they had a pretty good match with uh, Brock when they dropped the, the ring. They went apart. That was cool. All right, yeah, so yeah, yeah, cool. of course. That was, that was in SmackDown, I think, and that was a pretty cool one. They, even Chaz went, holy shit! <laughs> And they bleep it. So that was, that's the thing with those wrestlers, man. They are the first to do it. And that's, that's, I think, one of the most uh, awesome moments of Big Show, man. Well, thank you again, as always, for calling in. Marco, how's everything going out there? How's the um the pandemic? Um, okay, man. Thank you. So, guys, okay. How's the, how's the, pand- how's the pandemic you, happening you. over there for you guys? Are you all right over there? Yeah, well, Juana's not doing very good, man. We are the, Second city with most cases of coronavirus right here. So we're having ourselves weird, real careful because people don't get it. And uh, well, we pray for God, man. We pray for God because we want to get out of here. We want to do things outside. So. <laughs> oh man, oh, yeah. If you listen, oh, it's it's a headache. But guys, um, Marco, make sure you guys stay safe, stay uh, secure, and make sure everything's all good for you. So. Uh, as always. Okay, man. Take care of your guards. Thank you for everything, you mook. Mook, Latino heat, mook. So, um. I apologize. I don't think you would hear me. So I was just saying much love and shit. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you can hear on your end. Yeah, fuck it. But. <laughs> that was, uh, fuck it. Um, <laughs> I was like, yeah, fuck it, whatever. Sorry, about the, w- sorry about the w- camera going out a little bit, too. I had, I had something right there. So, guys, we're back. Uh. uh you know what I noticed for in in Big Show's WWE WWF career? What's that? Hello? Yeah. No, you're breaking up, you sir. Know? Yeah, here you go. Yeah. Oh, great! Somebody's calling in right now. Hold on. Turbo Tabloid, who's this? Yo, yo, it's Henry. Henry, what's up, Bobby? What's going on? What's going on? I see you guys are talking about the big show. Well, uh, well, it's the big show. My, 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 my first impression of the big show when he first came out um, in 95, you know, I, I said, well, this is a big dude. You know, um, he looked at kind of stiff when he started. Um, he fell off the roof, supposedly, and came back to life. But... He, he, I mean, he had a decent drop kick for a big guy. I remember watching him in a match, and he, and he threw a drop kick, and I was like, wow. But what messed up the big show in WCW was they turned him as a good guy, right? And him and Luger made a run as a tag team, and he became very popular in the whole night. But once I, – I, I thought maybe WCW didn't have nothing else for him. I think they teamed him up with Sting, and then he ended up – turning on, on WCW, joined NWO, and then they WCW kind of pretty much buried him when they put him in the ring with Goldberg, and, and Goldberg uh, did the spear and the jackhammer on it. After that, he was done. I think when he went to WWE, um, the fact that, like, like Mo said, that he was put in a spot in the St. Valentine's Day uh, massacre pay-per-view again with Stone Cold and McMahon, that pretty much... Um, pushed his career and he was nowhere near the way he was in WCW. He got, he got, you know, he, he caught a poke to the top, you know, I, I think he won a couple of titles if I'm correct. Um, but I think they made a mockery after him when they put him in the ring with Floyd Mayweather. And I, I think that when they put him in there with Floyd Mayweather and, and it made him like Mayweather, made him like a fool that, that messed him up. But 
Really? I, you know that that is a good that's a good thing. And I'm gonna talk to Olski about that in a minute because he can't hear you right now. But um, oh, he can't. Well, he well you can't hear him. But that 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 was a big thing I, with, with Mayweather. That was huge at at, at that time. Yeah, to have it, him it, it, it was. Yeah, it was huge. But right after that, I mean, it, it, the the build up to it was great. Don't get me wrong. The build up was he broke his nose and all that. The build up, but. It just like after that he was never the same. Like every time, every time he went into the ring, one minute he was a good guy, the next minute he was a bad guy. They they made him cry. And it was just like they, they they he never had that push like he had when he first came. He was like he was like Brock Lesnar fucking beat up buddy. Like he would go and you know if Brock came back, he was the first one he wrestled, and he like he was never the same. You know, that's why I, it was funny when they brought him back, I think a couple of months ago. And I was like, why is he back? I think he fought, think he fought uh, McIntyre after the WrestleMania, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. that, um, I think that what happened was with him, and before I let you go, I'm going to ask you um, your, your greatest of all time. Um, I think with him is that he's just an attraction, and that's what the big men are. They're attractions. Did we not? I mean, yeah, uh, I mean, maybe. I mean, he's, I mean, he looks like a, a guy outside of the ring. He looks like a, he's a very lovable guy, you know. Um, but, I mean, he, he's definitely out there, maybe, you know, Hall of Fame, if that, if that was the inductive, because he has won titles and tag team titles and all that. But, you know, I think the the, the best big show moment I ever had, I think, was when he fought John Cena. But I believe it was the United States title of WrestleMania. I think that was one of his good moments for me. Yeah, I think that's you one know? of I think that's that's up there for me yeah. as well. But now, who's your who's your, your greatest I, of all time? Oh, I, you know, Big Man Vader to me is the greatest of all time, the best big man in wrestling. And anybody could argue with me about it, whatever. But this man held world titles as he held the WCW. He held a world title in Europe, a world title in Japan. This guy for his uh, weight and height for a guy who was 450 pounds. This guy was doing moonsaults from the top of the rope. He would move like like a cruiserweight. This guy was the best, but you will never see him in the Hall of Fame WWE because of a match he had with Shawn Michaels uh, uh SummerSlam, and he kind of forgot a spot, and he got shitted on for that, and he was never the same. So they never used. He couldn't use that that that. Uh, the strong style that he was using in WCW and WWE because they weren't having it. So, you know, I, I was watching some shoot from him a couple of years ago where he claimed that Shawn Michael was the one that messed up his career because he was never the same. After that, he was done. You know, he made up the case. They brought him into WWE as a big heel. He beat up Gorilla Monsoon, and then he was out because he was out for with an injury. But then when he fought Shawn Michael, he missed that spot on SummerSlam. That was it. it was yeah. Over. I, I, big I, back I, I, and I think I think I think he, I think um, Vader is one of those guys that's up there in the game, but doesn't you know not get recognized because of the fact that how he was a, a bit, oh not even a bit, a lot stiff in the game. But you know who 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 wasn't during that time, especially when he came to big men. But Henry, as always, give a shout out to uh, your podcast and what you what you've been doing this week. Yeah, well, I'll have uh, the Joe Flat Wrestling Report on my YouTube. A channel also on um, Apple, Spotify, anywhere you uh, you could you hear your stuff. I have Dominic De Niro pop for next weekend. Uh, a little ten minute, I think ten to twelve minute uh, interview that I have with him that I did today. So stay tuned to that. All right, Henry. As always, much love and thank you for supporting us, man. And, and much love to your podcast. And we got we got things coming up soon. Yeah, we we got to do something soon, bro. So, All right, we'll yeah. see. later. All right, later. He brings up the Floyd Mayweather thing. What was your thoughts about that? Um, Henry, love you, but if you want to talk about disasters, are we not going to talk about Big Show versus Aki Bono? Now that's the fucking. <laughs> now that's the fucking match that is not, embarrassing. Can we not talk about that? Can we not? Like, like Big Show versus Mayweather was was money. Like as much as uh, no pun intended, that drew. And I remember that WrestleMania being that was the ticket seller. That was the the match that people were like, "Holy shit!" Like, what a crossover. 
Big Show versus Aki Bono. Now that's where it starts getting embarrassing. Like I said, Big Show gets signed by WWE, WWF. And it was such an up and down ride of, it went from Big Show being the top force in the company to then at, um, being at the New York City restaurant at WrestleMania holding babies and kissing babies and going, WrestleMania, woo! Well, remember, he also, remember, remember, remember he was doing the gimmicks that he was, he was fucking dressing up like Hulk Hogan and shit like that? Yes, yes. And it, it was an up and down ride, but he, he won seven championships. He had great, great tag teams. With the likes of Kane, Jericho, The Miz Show, um, the list goes on and on. By the way, the name The Big Show comes from the abbreviation for TBS, where WCW used to run their Thunder Show. Oh, I did not know that. The Big Show, yes. The Big Show. The big, but... pe- the big petty competition between the two fucking promotions. But there, there of course, is... Ups and downs with everyone's career, but it went from serious to comedic. Serious to comedic. Serious. Uh, let's see who's calling it out. Turnbuckle Tabloid, who's this? Yeah, it's Ben from England. Do you know how it does? Ben the Brits, what's going on, sir? Loving your TikTok. You're back on it again, aren't you? Uh, only for a bit. I can't be honest. Keep doing it, to be honest. But yeah, that's uh, do it for the fans. Uh, Oski wanted to know what, what what's your thoughts about the vampiro the vampiro situation and his thoughts of what's uh uh his 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 time at um no 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 so ask Ben well, one question he asked about the vampiro say that again Jay sorry mate what what, what was the question he asked about vampiro oh vampiro yeah uh, Chris Van Chris Van Vick was doing a um okay yeah interview with with vampiro. And he just had a Q and A, and I asked a couple of questions, and he actually asked them, which is pretty cool. So, which is cool for me because I'm a huge Vampiro fan anyway. So I was quite happy about that. I was quite fanboying over that. You didn't that. ask how big was Batista's dick? No, um, to be honest, it's not one of the main things I think of when I think of Batista. It's up there, but I'm not too <laughs> fussed about that. Your thoughts on the Big Show? <laughs> I've always liked the Big Show. I mean, I think he was underused. Uh, in WWE, personally, I mean, I don't like when they make wrestlers into jokes. I personally enjoyed the Aki Bono match just because I love seeing fat men in pants. <laughs> so it kind of hits home um, when you see that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's they make me feel better about myself. Oh, okay. So right. I was all right with that. Um, but no, I I disagree with your, your friend who was on earlier saying about the Mayweather thing. That anyone that goes up against Mayweather. Um, whether they lose, which pretty much everyone has ever lost against uh, Mayweather, but that makes someone, and I don't think it changed Big Show at all. It probably probably excelled him really. The that, fact that he's yeah. going against probably one of the big second, maybe third biggest boxers of all time. But yeah, I, I really like the Big Show. I prefer, I personally prefer him in WCW. Um, I think they used him properly. I first saw him as the Giant, and I was like, fuck me, this dude's massive, but his hair's shit. Um, that's what I thought. And uh, I thought he was really good. Um, I liked him in WWE. My favourite Big Show moment, uh, probably his feud with Big Boss Man, when Big Boss Man kept stealing Big Show's dead dad. Oh, of yes, of course. Yeah, people seem to forget that. Um, I quite enjoyed that, because it's a bit fucking risque. Well, I'm not, well, uh, I'm not even going to ask you who's your big, your, your your best big man because I know I already know number one is big is Bam Bam Bigelow. Uh, how how can anyone say you can't like a guy like Bam Bam Bigelow? He was in all three wrestling companies. He was a scary motherfucker. He was agile as shit. And after he retired, he owned his own burger burger van. That guy's an absolute fucking legend. And I know number two, if you wanted to put him up there, was Naked Midian. Yeah, I wouldn't class Naked Midian as a big guy, especially if you've <laughs> seen him naked. So, no, uh, I wouldn't put him up there. But, but behind Bam Bam, so who I, would you put? Uh, Bam Bam. Uh, well, I mean, growing up, I, I didn't watch WF. I watched ECW. So, big guys in ECW, like, I liked Big Dick Dudley because mm. he was a big guy. He did big moonsaults as well for how big he was. Right. Um, I liked 911 as well because he just come in Choke Samsung fucker and then fucked off. I liked him. Um, but yeah, I mean, big guys, you've got to go, you've got to say Taker, you've got to say Vader, uh, Kane. I mean, it depends what you class 
I was a good big guy. If you go for guys who've got shit loads of titles, then unfortunately, as much as I dislike him, you could probably say Goldberg, but I fucking hate Goldberg. He would never be in any category apart from the biggest knob heads in wrestling. Okay, I, I'll, um, give you, I'll give you one before we go. Why does okay. Kevin Nash never get in the conversation? Because he's renowned for being a bit of a prick now, which is Whoa. hard for me to say because I love the NWO. I have an NWO tattoo. I personally really, really like Kevin Nash. I like Scott Hall as well. But it says something when I prefer Kevin Nash as a Russian in um, The Punisher. In the Punisher. Do it. Great, one of his greatest yeah. roles ever. I, I prefer him in that when he doesn't speak over his um, wrestling career. But that's only because I know things about Kevin Nash outside of wrestling. If you just watch Kevin Nash for, res- uh, for wrestling, then yeah, he's probably up there. But like I said, because I know what he's like outside the ring. I know, of- I know, I know. Olski lo- liked him in um t- uh, in um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as a Super Shredder, so that was probably his better move movie like role. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. All right, but- all right, Ben. But as always, thank you for calling in, sir. Okay, guys, uh, stay safe. Glad I didn't feel sorry for Olski because he's probably not been part of this conversation at all. Yeah, we're working on it. It's yeah. gonna happen soon. We'll get him. Once it, it, it's got to happen soon, he's got to get in studio soon because we're working on the schematics. <laughs> the desktop is actually working. Now we're just going to make sure that everybody can hear themselves. So, uh, once well, again, okay. Ben, thanks for, for calling in. All right, guys. Uh, see you later. I'll keep watching. Mook! Mook! Later. It's funny because Kevin Nash doesn't really get in a lot of people's conversations. Why is that? Uh, I love Kevin Nash. I, I actually was going to put him as one of my top favorites as um... – I love I love Kevin Nash. I think you and me love Kevin Nash for not only his personality, but for um, I just find I just find him an entire an, a whole meme. He's Everything smart. He's he smart for the business. I don't care what anybody tells me. He's real. He was real smart for the business. Oh, and he, he is. Was, and he took advantage of what was a company that needed him most. Yep. And listen, man, Kevin Nash was not a bad wrestler. I mean. He tore his quads, but maybe we'll do a Kevin Nash one day. We got a five moves of doom. So you mean to tell me a guy like Nolan Ryan, who had just a fastball. <laughs> Good job, Kevin. Good I save. love that. But um, to close out cutting a promo, uh, I have to say, big man wise, I always have to go with Undertaker and Kane. Yeah. Especially yeah. Kane. Kane, after you learn about him, and we'll probably do a, a hot tag about him as well. Kane's the favorite big man of all time. But Big Show is a guy that really, really needs to be. I think he, he went under the Undertaker learning tree and was basically a guy who took all those those tools that were handed to him. And said, yeah, a lot of tough love, man. But yeah. It worked. And he said, look, you know, you, you're with a company that's going to take care of you. Where else are you going to go that they're going to take care of you like this? And he he took it to heat. Yeah, man. Big Show took a lot of knowledge from Undertaker, which uh, the stories are great. Like, really, uh, J.D. Kerrigan? Really? We're, we're going to go with that fucking monstrosity from from the, the oddities? Get out of here. Um, although although he, he had a great role in fucking um, in Sherlock Holmes with Robert Downey Jr. I love that fucking – he got his uh, uh, nice fight scene there. Never saw that. Uh, oh, that's a great movie. You got to watch that movie. It's awesome. But – Undertaker, uh, the stories of Big Show knowing he had a bad match, and Undertaker was waiting right for him at, behind the curtain. Um, learned a lot from Undertaker, um, as most guys did. And ever since, Big Show won seven championships. He he was face heel, regardless of what he did. He was in for possibly anything WWE threw at him. Uh, he never complained. He did what was told. He, he was told, and he made amazing moments. Um, I know you're probably gonna ask me my favorite moment of the Big Show. Of course, and my one of my favorite moment from the Big Show, besides the Money Mayweather match, which I think is up there because that match just was I it was it was so it was awesome. You cannot tell me that Brock Lesnar superplexing Big Show off the top on SmackDown and the ring collapsing is not in your top Big Show moments. Regardless yeah. if he got hurt yeah. or what, that mo- that moment w- with Big Show will always be known, remembered, and se- and 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 reflected on in the history of WWE. Well, that and being dragged from on top of a fucking casket by um, Big Boss Man uh, on a hearse yep. was. And you know what? 
and you know what? I'll tell you one more. Which people, this is this is a hot take, and this is what people aren't people aren't going to agree with me on this one. I love Big Show's ECW champion. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, no, no. I a, said it. On fuck the you guys. Paul Heyman with Big Show? Yeah. With his hair, with, fuck you. I'll say that twice. I love his run as <laughs> ECW champion. He said, I'll say it twice. Fuck you. They had nothing else to do with him on SmackDown. They made him the, the main dude on ECW with Paul Heyman. You can't be mad at that. Big Show, yo, know, everything Big Show has done has either had a good, has always been um, undervalued. And I think one day he needs to be recognized for what he's done. He's put so many young guys over. I remember, I remember in 2014 and 13 when he, it was the feud, excuse me, between the Big Show and Roman Reigns. Well, what about? Which, by the way, what about Big Show and um, Rey Mysterio? That's what I'm saying. Big Show and Rey Mysterio. He, Big Show pro were mad guys, and which actually I looked up online. People call Big Show versus Roman Reigns at Extreme Rules in 2014 one of Big Show's greatest matches. Yeah. Don't know if that's true. But they gave that match a lot of praise. And regardless of what you guys say, he was that leaping pad for Roman and for a lot of these guys that we love today. Big Show was the first person to stand up in the back and go, I'll put this young guy over. I want to give back. I've heard interviews with him say it in the past. Even on the Stone Cold show, he goes, yo. Because they, the, they addressed it, how he turned face and heel every five minutes. He goes, yo, I don't care. He goes, Vince, what, if Vince called me one day and said I'm face – and then the next day he would call me and say, I'm healed. I'm doing it. Because that's, if that's what they need me for, I'm going to do it. Loyal, consistent, and regardless of what people say, he was one of the most hardworking guys to put these young guys over. And it's him. He's one of the main reasons why these young guys like Rollins, Roman, that they're where they're at. Because Big Show, they trusted Big Show with, with helping them succeed. And listen, if you didn't like knuckleheads, then you could take his WMD. And SMD, if you know what? what I'm saying. Wow. You can say that. What's your favorite Big Show moment before we close out? Uh, I was a fan of the, um, the, the rivalry he had with, um, with, with Cena for, for the U.S. title. But I was, always, I was always... Him and Eddie. The Eddie one was cool as well. But I always liked when he was with the tag teams. I liked the Miz show. I liked Jerry show. I liked when he was, uh, it was, tagged, oh, it was tagged up with somebody. Fun fact, Big Show and Kane is one of my favorite tag teams of all time. That was fun as well. I loved Big Show and Kane. They were fun. I literally, I genuinely believe that no one could ever take the straps off them. Never. I never, I, when I was a kid, I was like, there's no team. Them for Big Show and Kane versus Chris Masters and Carlito at WrestleMania 22 was a joke to me. I, I left. I, okay. I have a feeling that you did those tag teams in, uh, in all the wrestling games you played. Of course I did. Big Show, and, Big Show and King was one of my favorite tag teams of all time, and it always will be. All right, guys. So that, that'll wrap up our first edition of Cutting a Promo Presents The Hot Tag. Thank you for everybody who participated, and thank you for you guys who are watching on Facebook. Make sure you share and subscribe and be a part of this every week. Every week. We don't fucking half-ass it. Every week here on Facebook Live, and uh, we'll be sharing this on YouTube as well. Guys, uh, if you download and listen and subscribe, we will be back. We have more to come. We have Wrestling Rundown as well as the four W's, which is what we watch in wrestling. Guys, don't go anywhere. Stick around. We will return.